I'm ready. Uh, good evening, Interesting. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June 4th, 2014 regular meeting of the Daytona Beach Community Redevelopment Agency. We're delighted to have you with us this evening. At uh, this time, I would ask that Mrs. Thomas review the procedures for tonight's meeting. Good evening. Agendas are available in the front of the room on the table to my right. All of the exhibits pertaining to items on the agenda are posted on the bulletin board here in the chambers. Please feel free to view them at any time during tonight's meeting. You are required to fill out a blue form to speak before the Community Redevelopment Agency. My assistant is holding that form up, Ms. LaMagna. You must complete the sections that ask for your name, address, topic of concern, agenda item number, signature, and date. Item number 6A is your opportunity to speak before the Community Redevelopment Agency concerning any item on tonight's agenda that is not scheduled as a public hearing, or you may address the city the CRA on any issue that is not on the agenda. Resolutions on a, under administrative item number seven are open for public comments and you may fill out a blue form to speak before the CRA. All citizens completing a blue form will be allowed to speak for two minutes. When you approach the lectern, please speak clearly into the microphone and give your full name and address. The two minute clock will begin. You will be told when your time has expired. Disorderly conduct in public meetings of the CRA, Article 2, Section 62-38 of the City Code of Ordinances reads as follows. It, is, it shall be unlawful for any person to behave in a riotous or disorderly manner in any public meeting of the City Commission, CRA, or any committee, agency, or board thereof, or to cause any unnecessary disturbances therein by force, shouting, or any other action calculated to disrupt, disrupt such meeting or to refuse to obey any ruling, ruling of the presiding officer or such meeting relative to orderly process thereof. All conversation must take place either at the lectern or on the dais so that everyone can hear the business that's being discussed tonight. Thank you. Mrs. Thomas, may we have a roll call? <clears throat> Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Gilliland. Here. Commissioner Henry. Here. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Lentz. Here. Commissioner Woods. Here. Mayor Derek Henry. Here. We will now have the invocation led by Commissioner Henry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner White. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to serve our city. We ask that you bless this meeting, bless the procedure. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now move on to item 4A, approval of the April 2nd special meeting minutes of the CRA. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Gilliland, a second by Commissioner Henry. Do we have questions or corrections to the minute? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Uh, likes not opposed, same sign. This motion carries 7-0. Now move on to item number five, agenda approval. If there are any changes, our city manager will read them at this time. Mr. Mayor, we have one change. We're going to add 7B, the historic Coquina Clock Tower Restoration Grant Submission Expenditure of Funds. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Gilliland and a second by Commissioner Reed. Uh, with those, uh, any discussion or comments? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Uh, likes not opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> Moving on to item 6A, it is our public comments by people addressing the Community Redevelopment Agency. <coughs> this is the opportunity for citizens to address the CRA concerning any item on tonight's agenda that is not scheduled as a public hearing, or you may address the CRA on any issue that is not on the agenda, and I do not have any speakers. 
Excuse me, we may have one speaker. No. Oh, okay. No. Moving on to our administrative items. Okay, we do have a speaker. Okay. Okay. Mr. My pen Jackson. ran out of the ink and I <laughs> put my name State down. Your name I'm Jim address. Zeisler, 1437 okay. Ruthman Road, Daytona Beach in Federal Estates. I represent the uh, National Watch and Clock Collectors Association, which have adopted the Coquina Clock Tower on the beach since prior to 1978. And a lot's been done down there since 1978 when the weather vane blew away but a lot has not been done and that's why I'm here and I'm so thankful that you passed this uh, <clears throat> ordinance tonight to get the job done it's long overdue and uh, this WPA project from 1937 is on the National Historic Register of Buildings and I've been working on this baby since, <laughs> I don't know, I know for 15 years plus. Uh, and it's the logo for our chapter, our local chapter. So all of our guys since that time have taken this project under their wing. We have had in, un, I don't know how many in-kind hours we've donated to the city to keep this thing running. Now, it's running, it's keeping time, but the stonework, as we all know, needs help. So if we could get that done, get it looking, at that and the band shell looking good. Um, when I'm down there, uh, invariably, there are dozens of people that come up and ask, what are you doing? And uh, taking pictures. And you know, this is a... Malcolm, Sir Malcolm Campbell's monument and Bud Asher's name is on that plaque. And he's, I just told Ruth Traeger, he's probably going like this trying to get this thing done. So I really appreciate the efforts on that and uh, I'm, I'm looking so much forward to getting this project. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zeisler, for all your, your hard work on this project. and. You as well, Ms. Traeger, but uh, especially to you for, you know, I know this has been your passion and we appreciate it. <laughs> I'm not sure what the name is. I think it's Johnny. I'm not sure. It's 829 George Ingram Boulevard. And on deck is Steve Jordan. Miller. Johnny Jordan. Johnny Jordan. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Board of Daytona. I'd like to talk about... State your name and address, please. Oh, 829 George Duffer Ingram Boulevard. My name is Johnny Jordan. Okay. I'd like to discuss a children's program for Daytona Beach, and I'd like to also discuss a recreation team for the board. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Our next speaker is Steve Miller. Good evening, commissioners, uh, Mr. Mayor, city, assistant city manager, clerk, commissioners. Uh, I stand tonight on behalf of our students here, our, our kids here in the city of Daytona Beach. We know that there's 26 boards that we have in the city representing the interests of so many different organizations, but we have not one board to represent our children here in the community. Uh, we feel that our recreational program is not really adequate. We have no baseball in the city of Daytona Beach, literally. If, if so, I think they said they got 20. They have over two, over 800 people in our soccer program in the, in the city. We haven't had an after-school program in the last two years in the city of Daytona Beach. Uh, what we'd like to see is a board established to represent the city commissioners and, and of course, the citizens of Daytona Beach, especially our children. So there's uh, 
Parks and Recreation Board in almost every city in the United States except for the city of Daytona Beach. So we'd like to ask the, the mayor and the commissioners to establish a Park and Recreation Board so that our children could be represented and they could have the type of activities that they need to so that they could grow and be the individuals they, they're looking for. I was just informed that the city of Port Orange have about seven kids who have baseball scholarships to go to major uh, college uh, programs. We have not one. Getting ready for the National uh, World Series, well, the, the Little League World Series is in August. Right now, the Little League is becoming 75 years old on the 6th of this month. We have no Little League program. Our kids will never play in the Little League World Series. We have parents in the city who have never seen their child play Little League or T-ball, now baseball. We used to have programs for adults and, and uh, female softball. We have none of those activities at this particular time. We feel that if we had a board, we can actually create some of those types of programs. We have the American College, well, the, the Midtown Redevelopment Center. Mr. We have Miller, the, your time has expired. Well, Thank you so much. Thank you. Mitch, can I have two more minutes just to close no, that thought? I, I think we, we, we follow you, and we'll, we, we can all listen to you. And I've talked to you, I spoke to you about it, and I'm willing to listen further, but okay. I think we follow you. Okay. okay. Can I? No. Okay. We'll listen to you at a, at a later time, or you can call okay. us. We'll okay. Meet with us individually. But we also have a resolution from Port Orange that shows that they have the recreation board and what it made of. We appreciate your support. Okay. If, Mr. Thank Mayor, you. I was going to say this for commissioner comments at the end, but uh, one of the things was through strategic planning and whatnot uh, mm -hmm. that we've talked about is is trying to do what we can to stretch our our dollars the further on that. But we've. Uh, one of the things that seems to make sense to me is to expand the responsibilities of the golf advisory board to be a parks and recs board where one of their agenda items would be oversight of, of performance at the golf course. But um, it seems to me we, that would be a fairly easy way to, to bring greater uh, involvement from the community in our parks and recs activities without incurring the additional twenty-five dollars to $50,000 a year expense that we incur every time that we create a new board. Mr. So just something to think about. Okay. All right, well, that's something that you know, obviously this is this will be an item that we'd have to talk about during our planning and strategic planning, and I'm sure the commission will take it up. But the problem we have, Mr. Mayor, is that we got summer schools starting right now, and we don't have that many programs for our kids. And right now, we used to have. 200 kids that come to our after school program. We haven't had it in two years because of funding. We have a solution to that. But Mr. Miller, first of all, this, you know, I want to okay, close this out. The, the establishment of a board is not going to transpire uh, within that time frame. That's just really, that's not possible. Um, and any other establishment of an additional program is not likely to happen in that time either. But it doesn't mean that you know, I think we take pride in the programs that we're offering, and you know, we we could sit here and argue about what we're offering and what we're not offering, but we appreciate what you've said. Okay, and so I'll be happy to talk with you. And you can talk with the other commissioners. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to our administrative items, item 7A is the Public Works Engineering Martin Luther King Boulevard MLK Phase 1 Roadway Enhancement Expenditure of Funds Resolution, <laughs> a resolution approving the expenditure of tax increment funds from the Midtown Redevelopment Area Trust Fund in the amount of $195,492.50 for road improvements to Martin Luther King Boulevard in the Midtown Redevelopment Area and providing an effective date so moved second, second. <laughs> motion is um, approved by commissioner is uh, made by commissioner reed and second by commissioner white how's that commissioner reed all right <laughs> um okay uh, we have a motion and second do we have any uh, comments from the commission i have a couple of questions yes ma'am that i'd like to pose one we're paving mlk uh, from Orange Avenue to Shady Place. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about the infrastructure. If I understand your question, you're concerned about the utilities and stormwater structures beneath the road? Correct. Yeah, we had extensive discussions of this and analysis of this, and we think we're um, okay there, and uh, that 
at this point in time we don't have any issues with existing underground utilities I can't promise you they won't happen in the future there's nobody can but at this point in time um, we don't see a need to do anything with the underground utilities and when do we project this to start phase one I would hope within 30 days that you'll see them out there paving, if not less. And this doesn't include sidewalks, correct? No, no. no Just no. the street. This is just sidewalk to sidewalk. Okay. Right. All right. And, and phase two, which we mentioned, would be from ISP to Orange. That's out to bid right now because that's what we call a full depth reclamation or reconstruction of base and paving. And hopefully we could be ready to come back to you in two meetings from now with that award. That Can you call. clarify what that means, what, what you just said? I didn't phase hear two phase two construction. Okay, phase two actually, the, the first phase is milling and resurfacing, where you're really stripping off the top mm -hmm. surface of the road, the asphalt surface, and putting it back. Um, and that's an enhancement because we're going to be going to what's called FDOT super pave, which is about another three quarters of an inch thick than what's probably there. Um, and we'll be doing extra crown on the road to make it drain better. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between that and the full depth reclamation is in full depth reclamation you actually not only take the asphalt off but you get down and reconstruct the base material because that road was built without a base basically a lot of that asphalt was just laid down on the ground and there's very little under there so we've had a lot of failures with that road mm -hmm. in that section because the base is just uh, eroded and not in good, good shape and that's a more costly uh, and more time consuming uh, improvement but I my goal is to have all this done within 90 days okay Great. and can I ask approximately how long would this last Pardon me? how long would this last what's the history on on what all we're talking about the the super pave um, average is between 15 and 20 years with moderate maintenance and uh, probably longer than that if because you, the traffic on that road is not that heavy. Mm -hmm. It's a function of how much traffic loading there is on the road over the years. I would anticipate this to last easily 15, 20 years. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, did I interrupt you? No. Oh, okay. I have my little bullets here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, da, da. okay. And, and we've been asking for this for some time. Uh, could you just explain that the ability to do this is because of the savings we had on the bidding for Orange Avenue? Correct. We were holding back funds that we thought we may have to have for Orange Avenue. But our bids came in um, so favorably for us that it allowed us to take that money that we were holding in reserve and release it back to the CRA for CRA projects. All right. Uh, if I may do one more thing, um, I'd just like to acknowledge my predecessor, Commissioner Reynolds. I know this is something that she wanted done, and it's being done while I'm in the chair, but I know it had to start somewhere else. And also Commissioner um, Shelley sitting next to her, Edith Shelley. But I just wanted to acknowledge my pre predecessor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My questions are answered. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, I want to express how important the project is. And it's, it, it is in uh, Midtown. In, in an area and the, your definition of how the road was constructed uh, speaks to some historical inequities in our city mm -hmm. and to see that inequity being corrected is a very positive and I think it's, it's just good for the city and I think it'll go a long way with making residents you know feel appreciated. We're looking forward to making it happen for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right we have a motion and a second. All those in favor let it be known by saying aye. 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 Our likes not opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7-0. Moving on to item 7B, it is our addendum. It's the historic Coquina Clock Tower Restoration Grant Submission Expenditure Funds Resolution, a resolution approving the expenditure of tax increment funds from the Main Street Redevelopment Area Trust Fund in the, in the amount of $29,450 in connection with the city's application to the Florida Department of State Division of Historic Resources for a 2015 Historic Preservation Grant for restoration of the historic clock tower located within the Main Street redevelopment area and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Gilliland and a second by Commissioner Woods. Uh, oh, 
Yeah, I'm so used to saying Commissioner Gilliland. <laughs> My apologies, I'm looking right at you. <laughs> and I know it's you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have a motion by Commissioner Lentz and a second by Commissioner Woods. Do we have any uh, questions or comments here? None? Uh, no speakers. Okay. Uh, I, I will say that um, uh, thank you to staff for getting this together so quickly. I know it was an item that came came at us suddenly, but um, and and Mr. Zeisler as well. He, he pulled me aside just um, just what was it last week or week and a half ago at a at the homeowners meeting for Fairway Estates, and um, and and this sort of got thrown in the mix really quickly and usually we don't do things too too quickly um, we know that <laughs> and uh, but it was it was it's nice that it's getting done because um, time was of the essence in this matter and um, and this grant application is going to be filed as a result of uh, a lot of people's hard work so thank you for getting that done to the staff thank you okay we have a motion in a second all those in favor let it be known by saying aye aye the likes not opposed same sign the motion carries seven zero Moving on to item eight, it is comments and inquiries from the Community Redevelopment Agency, City Manager, and City Attorney. All right, does anyone have any comments or thoughts? Uh, hearing none, uh, uh, okay. No comments, no thoughts. This meeting is going to be adjourned for about five minutes. We will uh, reconvene uh, as quickly as possible, which will be 6.30.